Well, you may have seen our video with the baseline data before we fitted the Bronton using our fixed pitch prop that came with the boat. We took the boat out and we changed the prop. And when we did, we found that the fixed pitch prop was a little bit fouled. So we're going to scrap that data. You might notice in this that we're a little bit happy because we are so surprised at how good it is. I will be talking after the video about the problems associated with the data that we've gathered in this film and how we're going to get around that over the coming months. Here it is. 2800 RPM. 7.0 knots at 2800 RPM. Six hundred RPM. Six point six point nine knots. RPM. Eighteen hundred RPM, five point six knots, sixteen hundred RPM. We're going on an ebb tide here, so we're actually against the tide, so this is really there's no point in doing the down the other way because it's already a big difference. 5.2 knots. We know the other the other data was not reliable because of the dirty prop, so it's not really a fair test. 1400 RPM. Let it slow down, stabilise. 4.8 knots. Right, I'm going back to full power to do this stop test. I've got a boy coming up here, so I'm going to get myself up as fast as I can go. As you can probably gather from that, we were quite impressed. However, 
there are some issues with the data that we gathered in that film. We're comparing speed against RPM and we're comparing RPM using a fixed pitch propeller and a variable pitch propeller. Why does that make a difference? Well, because with a fixed pitch propeller, as you increase RPM, there are two contrary effects. One is that RPM increases, so rotational velocity goes up. This has the effect of increasing angle of attack because of the relative uh, water flow is less affected by induced flow through the water. But at the same time, as you increase RPM, you speed up and this affects the boat speed through the water, which means that induced flow increases and that reduces angle of attack of the blade. Now, from boat to boat, the match between those two varies because it's about drag. So we can't really make a fair comparison using uh, boats with fixed pitch propellers and boats with variable pitch propellers, because with the Brunton's autoprop, as we increase RPM and the boat speeds up, the angle of attack of the propeller remains just about at its optimum the whole time. That's a good thing, obviously, but the problem is that if we're using RPM, we're making an assumption about power. And that's not really true with the Brunton because we're getting more power with a lower RPM. So it may well be that we're running at a lower RPM, but using more fuel. So it would be unfair to compare RPM and RPM to speed without also looking at fuel flow. So what we're going to do over the next few months is take some detailed measures of fuel consumption um, and distance travel when we're motoring and when motor sailing and try and make a value judgment at the end of the season on whether or not this boat, uh, this propeller is worth the cost. That said, it really couldn't have been a better start. And what's not clear in this video, which was the highlight of our day, is the improvement that you get when you are motor sailing or sailing. So we went out on a light wind day with eight knots of wind out in Paul Bay and with uh, eight knots of breeze from various points of sail, we reckoned, and again, it's only a, a feeling, but we felt that it was about 0.7 to 0.8 of a knot faster than it would be in similar conditions with the old prop. We noticed the difference visibly. We could hear the difference. The boat felt better and we were pretty sure looking at the SOG and the water speed that we were about 0.7 of a knot up. Now that's not too far away from what Brunton's say you're going to get and so we've no reason to suspect that we've made a massive mistake. The real, the real revelation though was when we motor sailed. Now on a light wind day like that when you've got eight knots of wind if you're trying to make a tidal gate or arrive somewhere before dark or before a, a, the tide drops below a sill you might have to make an arrival time and that's the time when you end up motor sailing. Now to be able to motor sail with a lower RPM or to be able to motor sail and get higher speed um, is obviously a really big win and that's where this propeller made the biggest difference. And with eight knots of wind on various points of sail we averaged about 1.4 knots more than we would have got with the old propeller and for me that is absolutely incredible. Now obviously um, very easy to get excited about something when you first try it. So we're going to try um, to put that to one side and measure the data as accurately as you can over the summer and get a general feel for whether we think this is really worth the expense. I have to say though, right now is I'm saying absolutely worth every penny. So do come back to us at the end of the season and look for the follow up on this. But right now, um, yeah, we're saying it's good. I'm going to make another video shortly um, about comparison between the Brunton's autoprop and the fleet average data that can be found on the freeforum.net website where all the Jono 349 owners have shared their uh, measured data and we're going to see how it compares across the fleet. But so far it looks pretty positive.